Moi everyone, and welcome to Finish Your Plate. Runeberg's Day is the first culinary event on the Finnish calendar. J.L. Runeberg was a Finnish national poet, and he actually created this romanticized image of Finns as a people, and one of his poems even ended up being the national anthem. Oddly enough, he wrote all his poems in Swedish. Swedish was the dominant language, especially for arts at that time in Finland. So legend has it that Runeberg had a little bit of sweet tooth. So he asked his wife to create something for him. So this little pastry is the thing that the wife created for him. And thus, we eat it every year on Runeberg's Day on February 5th. Let's go through the ingredients. I have here butter, 250 grams, softened. I have here almond flour, about, this is about a cup of almond flour. Then I have here about, this is a little over half a cup, two thirds of a cup of ground up almonds. I just took some slivered almonds and I put them in a coffee grinder and pulsed them about four times. Then we have here about cup of plain sugar, a tablespoon of vanilla sugar. This is four teaspoons worth of cardamom. That's a lot of cardamom. And like I've said before, cardamom is a very common flavoring in a lot of Finnish pastries. Then I have two teaspoons of baking powder. And then one of the main ingredients is some gingerbread cookies. This is half a box, about 75 grams of gingerbread cookies that I just put in a plastic bag and I roll o rolled over with this rolling pin a couple of times. If you have a trouble finding gingerbread cookies, besides making them yourself, which isn't too difficult, you could also use ginger snap cookies. And also we have here four eggs, about a cup of cream, light cream, and a cup of the half of plain flour. So one of the things that's important for this particular pastry, Runeberg tart, is the molds. I have here, I found these molds on Amazon. So what I've done to them, I've buttered them up inside and, and rolled them in breadcrumbs. I'll show you a couple here. So I have here some breadcrumbs. You just take a buttered mold and then just scoop some breadcrumbs over and roll it. First what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix the dry ingredients. Flour, the almond flour, the chopped almonds, vanilla sugar, cardamom, and a baking powder, and uh, ground up gingerbread cookies. In this recipe, the plain sugar is actually not a dry ingredient, but it's a wet ingredient, so I'll show you what to do. So I'm just going to mix these, just combine. For the wet ingredients, I'm just going to add sugar and then the butter. And I'm going to start creaming the sugar and the butter. So now that the sugar and the butter have been creamed together, we're going to start adding eggs.
and then keep mixing. Okay, before we add our flour, make sure we just can scrape the sides. And we'll be adding the flour mixture and the light cream a little bit of a time alternating between each other. Also, at this point, if you want it to flavor with almond, you could add almond extract, uh, about a teaspoon, two teaspoons. However, I'm not going to be adding any because I will be flavoring it with amaretto later on. So I'm going to leave that out. But some people prefer the stronger almond flavor, so at this point you would add it. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep mixing it and add some flour and some liquid alternating. Okay, the batter is pretty much done. I'm just going to go through the sides, make sure everything's incorporated. There's no pockets of flour left. Sometimes a mixer can leave some pockets, especially on the bottom. Okay, so now all that is left to be done is we're going to spoon this mixture into these molds. These are now going to go in a 400 degree oven for about 20, 25 minutes. Okay, so the pastries are out of the oven. I made a second batch too because these ones were a little bit, maybe came out a little bit on the dark side. Um, also, these ones are maybe a little bit overfilled. So I filled these, the new batch, I filled it a little bit less in the mold. But that by itself is not a problem, even if they do overflow. That's not a huge issue because we're going to trim away the excess pieces anyway. So I'll show you what we're going to do now. So just to show you that these are easy. They will just slide out of the mold like that. There should be no problems at all. If you have any problems getting them out of the mold, Maybe try to trim a little bit. There might be a little piece that's sticking or something like that. So trim that away. But anyway, so these ones have cooled down a little bit, firmed up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a knife. I'm going to trim these, trim away that excess piece that's above the mold. And then we're going to decorate them. So we're just going to carefully cut off the excess top piece, kind of like the muffin top. And we're going to be left with this cylindrical pastry. This part, which was the bottom against the tray, that will be our top. So they're going to stand like that. Okay, now that I trimmed a couple of these, so I'm going to make a light syrup to moisten these with. I have here two tablespoons of sugar, plain sugar. I'm just going to pour a cup of hot water over it. And then just mix until it's dissolved. And now I'm just going to pour this into a vessel. 
Now I'm going to add a third of a cup of amaretto. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to roll these in this syrup all over. And now I'm just going to make a simple frosting. I'm going to use two cups of powdered confectioner sugar and then two tablespoons plus one teaspoon of water. I'm going to mix it into a paste. Now I'm going to put just a little dollop of raspberry jam on the middle, like so. If you have a piping bag, now's the time to break it out. I don't have a piping bag, so I'm just going to use a Ziploc bag with a corner cut out, and I'm just going to squeeze. our sugar around the edges. So you could let these sit in the fridge for a day or two and that would make the texture denser. Some people like the denser texture. Some prefer them a little bit more airy. That's up to you. Either way, I would still let them sit for at least a couple hours so that the syrup can really permeate the entire pastry. Finish Runeberg tarts. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Finish Your Plate.